Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show, your daily dose of guitar information. So, kind of ran out of time today. I recorded the 60s Ventera Jaguar, so we'll do that this weekend. But I was also hired as a personal shopper today, so we'll also have that story. But for Fender Friday, why don't we shop for some Fender guitars today? Let's go on to Reverb. Naturally, the easiest way to get to Reverb is just by clicking one of my links in my videos. That'll actually help support the channel, too. You'll notice this Gold Burst listing actually got swapped and they changed those photos around and the shop apologized for the error. So that's kind of a cool little conclusion to that one. I hope they didn't think I was attacking them or anything. But here we go. Let's search for some Fender guitars. Now, the way I found to actually look for the guitars that I'm interested is you got to use these little things over here. They kind of help refine your search. So since we're just looking at guitars, let's select electric guitars. And I found that usually I prefer to look at the American made guitars, but that doesn't mean there's not really cool made in Mexico ones made in Japan. So I usually limit the price to 350 or higher. That kind of weeds out all the beginner stuff that I wouldn't really be interested in. And here we go, a beautiful selection of guitars. Maybe we'll buy some today. Maybe this will just be a boring episode, but maybe we'll see some cool stuff. But this is what was just listed on Reverb at uh, Friday, 9 p.m. The first thing that kind of stands out to me is the Tom DeLonge Fender Stratocaster. He's the Blink-182 guy. And he's got a signature ES-333, I believe it is. And it's got a single humbucker in there, too. I've had a few people ask me to take a look at these things. They look kind of interesting, but the prices are all over the place. Now this actually doesn't seem too bad. It was only listed 11 minutes ago. Is this a deal or a steal? Let's find out. Well, it says custom silver. Let's find out what that's about first. All right, so this is a parts caster. I'm not interested. That's why buying these fenders can be kind of difficult because a normal Tom DeLong, I thought, yeah, those are around a thousand bucks or so. But honestly, this one doesn't look too badly priced. But I think I'll save these for another day. Next thing that catches my eye, oh, somebody has a modified vintage Jaguar at a crazy good deal. Oh wait, that's me. <laughs> I wonder what our next review and demo is. I put that one up a little bit early because I actually found some damage on it, unfortunately. So I'm probably just going to swap it out, but I thought I'd give somebody a chance at a good deal before we did something like that. This Telecaster is kind of cool. So it's a brand new 2019 Fender two-tone Telecaster. It's thin line and has a matching headstock. That's a really interesting vibe to it. Does it also have an ebony fretboard? That's almost what it looked like. Oh, do you guys see that? Does that have a white back? That is classy. I like that, especially since you have the black binding. I'm not sure if that's actually binding or not. Maybe it's just finish. That's really classy looking. Some of that probably would have made this a little bit better. Maybe they could have bound the F hole with black to make that pop as well. That was definitely a surprise. And it is indeed an ebony fretboard. Moving on here, mm, this is an interesting telly. So it's a thin line, but it looks like you have a Floyd Rose. No pick guard, we've got the humbucker. Is that a lace sensor in the neck? And you've got like a Jackson-esque inlays. What is going on here? Oh. <laughs> this is just like completely after the Jackson name because they've got the headstock looking like it. Even the logo is kind of interesting. So HMT, I think that stands for Heavy Metal Telly, if I remember correctly. I've ran into these a few times, but they're made in Japan. It's even got the comfort carve. You can see somebody's been playing that one a lot. $799.99. Seems a little bit high, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. I think I'll let it pass. The rest of this is just kind of looking like regular stuff. The Aerodynes are kind of cool. I like the Jag Stangs. I just can't find one at a price I'm comfortable paying. I think these guitars look like bunny heads, but I guess it's a mix up between the Jaguar and a Mustang and Kurt Cobain helped design these things. I'm sure one of these days I'll get one of these in to review, but these ones are also made in Japan. That doesn't seem like too bad of a price. Let's go ahead and see what others have sold for. So it looks like we got 1100, 900. This one's only 750. What's going on with that? This is Dave's guitar shop. This one only appears to have a few nicks and dings. Oh. Yeah, that's a pretty large ding. I guess I can see why it's so heavily discounted now. 
not a terrible deal for an end user, but it's been sitting for three months, so maybe you can haggle them down. I've dealt with Dave's a few times before. You can see I've bought seven items from him. Usually if it sits for more than a month, you can message him and haggle the price down a little bit. So all in all, 800 bucks, that doesn't seem too bad. I don't personally like the red one as much as the other color, but it says it's in mint condition, so that it's got that going for it. No scratches, no dents or anything, literally flawless. Hmm. It's a little bit of a low offer, 560, but I think I would be able to sell it for something similar to that. So if I think I can realistically sell it for 750, you're gonna have to take 50 out for fees, roughly 65 for shipping. I mean, I don't, ha I'm not making much of a margin here. If you guys have ever been curious how I buy guitars, this is always my mindset. So he'll probably decline, but you know, an offer's an offer. We'll see if he accepts. Everything else here, that's just the first page. Nothing too crazy, but there was a cool, a few limited editions. Looks like some new stuff just got listed too. The alternate reality series, it's kind of cool. Uh, not quite willing to pay brand new prices for them yet though. I would love to get a Meteora though. I've came close to getting a few of the Made in USA ones, but I haven't quite sealed the deal yet. I mean, when I'm, when I'm talking, I've gotten close. It's like we're $50 apart here from where I want to be. Hopefully one of these days I can just trade into it. That's a goofy looking thing. Player's Jaguar. You've got a humbucker in the bridge and the single coil in the neck. I like that. But I want to find something really cool. Sometimes you're, you've really got to dig to find those interesting guitars. I find when searching for Fender guitars, it's a lot different from Gibson's because there's just a boatload of new sellers on Reverb, whereas there aren't as many online dealers for Gibson. What? What? <laughs> I know, incognito tab. I didn't know they actually built these things. Dennis Galuska, something like that. Whoa. Double Telecaster. I know people have made these, but I didn't know that Fender actually made the double guitars. That's cool. Might have to uh, save this one to my watch list. Rock or not material in the future. There's another one from the alternate reality series, the 66. I think that's one of my favorite ones from the series because I love the covered single coil look. Looks like it's a pretty simple layout, but master volume, master tone. Uh, unfortunately, it's Chicago Music Exchange. They, I mean, they'll give you a deal sometimes, but they're not gonna give me a price where I would be able to get back out of it. The profit margins are just too low on guitars like that. Here's one from the Pawn Shop series. If I remember correctly, was the pawn shop, I think it was 2015, something like that. Had I had been in Defender at this point in time, I bet I would have bought one of each for review and documentation because there's some really freaky ones out there. This one's not too crazy, but it's still pretty crazy, right? I think the thing that catches me the most besides the pick guard and pickup layout is you get this little extra tab right there for the control layout. Let's take a look at the price on that one. That seems to be pretty fair. 550 plus 25 shipping. Yeah, here, here's that other one. This is one I was looking at a few days ago. That one's listed at 850 plus 75. I think I like the black finish better with the white pick guard. It's a little bit more jarring. I'll have to check the sold listings. Looks like we got uh, 600, 500. So anywhere between five to 600, I would say is fair game. 400s, well, maybe they do go as cheap as 400 when you can find them. I think I'd be comfortable buying one at 400 bucks. But since it's from a dealer, I don't think I'm going to waste their time. Any word back on the Jag Sting? Nope, not yet. Here's a 76 Starcaster. I don't know a lot about the Starcasters, but they're weird and goofy, and I like them. <laughs> I think one day I'll definitely have to pick one up for a full review and demo. But it's the headstock. It's like a meat cleaver or something. It's interesting, especially with the 70s bullet truss rod. That one and the Coronado, those things are cool. Oh, there's somebody that has one of the used Meteoras. Still not quite cheap enough. I think I would pay 600 bucks for one of those because I think I could probably get about 750 out of it. 
Most of my Fender reviews and demos, I don't make much. Maybe a hundred bucks just to make it worth my while. These Jimi Hendrix ones are kind of interesting too. I don't know the full story on those. I'd have to look it up. And you got the Stevie Ray Vaughan number one. Somebody was talking about they're going to send me a first year model of one of those. So stay tuned for that one. This telly's got an interesting vibe to it. I think what are those Filtertron pickups? If it had regular pickups, this almost kind of has like a, a John 5 vibe to it. He's a Telecaster user, but that's a really nice design here. And it's got that bound F hole we were talking about. Cool. Oh, even a matching headstock. Though at that price, I'm not really quite comfortable enough to make an offer on that. Moving on, just a bunch of run of the mill strats and tellies. I'm usually only interested in those limited editions. I think it makes things more fun. Oh, these two have quite the vibe to them. Purple pick guard. But this one, this one looks like a precursor to the American Acousta Sonic Telecaster. But I think what I'm more interested in is this telly back here. What's going on there? It's like a, a vintage style. Maybe it's a roasted body and that's why it all kind of looks the same. That's definitely cooler than this thing. But by the sounds of my phone, I think we might have an answer on the uh, Kurt Cobain here. Countered with 750 plus 60. That's fair. I just, I don't think I'd be able to get back out of it. Let's look up the numbers again. It's looking like 800's about top dollar for these guys. You can see you got a few at 650, 574. I would guess 550 is probably the cheapest you're ever going to find one of these, depending on what's wrong with it. If this was the blue one, I might offer him like 700 all in, but I think I'll, I'll probably just pass on this one. Thanks. Anyways, oh, we'll move on here a little bit more. Oh, let's talk about these real quick. So this is the last of the rarity series to come out. And to be honest, these look terrible. At NAMM, I thought they looked okay, but I am really not digging the way that these things ended up turning out. I think we'll see these at discount very soon. It seems most of the rarities didn't sell that well. There were a few really good ones and then just a few other kind of weird ones, but I'm interested to see what Fender does next year for their limited run. Well, at this point, we're probably seeing the guitars that have sat here for a while, so I don't think we're going to find a deal because deals usually sell within like the first couple of hours. So at this point, you just have to haggle your way into something good. So we'll take a look at one last one here. It's uh, Artisan Zircote Stratocaster. That looks nice. So is it just a Zircote like veneer over it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. I don't know. I'm pretty new to the whole Fender thing. Not really digging the veneers on top of Stratocasters. But oh, that's a nice ash back. <laughs> but take a look at this neck. That's pretty nice. I mean, it's not the flamiest we've ever seen. But combining that with the Zircote veneer, looks like we got an anodized pick card on it too. That's kind of a nice Stratocaster, but more than I'd be willing to pay. So there wasn't too much to look at today. We tried to buy one guitar. Maybe I should do this with a uh, Gibson episode one day because I'm a lot more versed in their market. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.